Okay, so what, I, what I've done is I have gone in to the background on my horse and I've changed it to black. I didn't like the background before. I think it's going to look better <clears throat> against a, a black background. And I don't know how this is going to work with me holding the phone and recording like this. I really want to I really want you to be able to see, you know, over here what I'm using. So maybe I'll just kind of hold it like this and see how this works. I um, hope you can see. Okay, so here's my horse. Um, I'm going to go back to my white colors. I'm gonna, now that I have a black background, I'm going to kind of enhance muscles in his neck a little bit. My mom just let me know that she watched this video, or the one before, um, the bio one, <clears throat> and that she was very, very happy that I was doing this, and proud of me, and all that good stuff, so that's, that was sweet. It is 2 o'clock in the morning, and my husband and I have watched... We're watching Veep right now with Juliet Louise Dreyfus, who was Elaine on Seinfeld. We love her, and it's pretty funny. It's a good, it's a good kind of light comedy, political comedy show for us. So, <clears throat> all right, I'm gonna kind of go over here to bluer color wheel because there's a lot of grays and it's more of a bluish gray I think let's see how I'm really I do a lot of tapping at first with the watercolor I'm not specifically doing any detail I'll get to that in a minute but at least at first, I'm just tap, tap, tap. <laughs> oh, I do need to get his mane in there. And because I had taken it out when I changed the background. And I do want it to be kind of fuzzy at first. And you'll see over here, I am constantly changing these things. If, it, if it's something I don't like, I'll change it almost without even realizing what I'm doing. Oop. Gotta make sure I get this whole thing in the picture. It's a really pretty horse. A white stallion kind of look like a white stallion who knows it could be a mare it just looks like a stallion <clears throat> so I do a lot of horses um, and I do a lot of dogs but I have tried to do animals of all types tried to do a lot of like African safari animals, tigers, lions, etc. I've done bear. I've done a bear. Um, you can you can kind of go you can go on my Facebook page and I have all of my art on Facebook. Um, called Cassie's Freehand Art. It's also under P Portraits by Cassie on Facebook. So anything that I do on Pigment, I'll also post it on Facebook or Instagram. I have an Instagram account that's just my freehand work. 
And I think it's, uh, <clears throat> I think it's also portraits by Cassie, freehand art by Cassie, something like that. I'll get the tags on here if I can figure out how to do that. Okay, so th look at this. Okay, what I'm seeing is if you look at this horse right here, his nose comes pretty close to the bottom of the of the canvas. My horse's nose does not come that far down. And that might mess up my picture, my perspective. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come and I'm going to bring it down a little bit more. And I'm going to kind of fix that. I mean, what's the, the beauty of this app? Nothing has to be set in stone. But believe me, I, I struggle with it when I'm when I'm first working on something, if I, if, if I know something's not right, I, I, there's always a point at the beginning where I'm saying, you know, the negative self-talk is going bananas. You can't draw. What? This is terrible. What are you doing? This is just, you can't, you just, you've lost it. You had it for a little bit. It was a gift and now it's gone. That kind of stuff runs through my mind. My mom and I laugh about it because, I mean, I guess that's a universal thing with artists. <clears throat> uh, I don't know a lot about what universal themes artists go through because I don't, I've never had any formal training. So it always is cool for me, for my mom to go, oh, Cassie, that's very common for people to go, there's just something about the mouth that's, that's just bothering me. There's just something about the mouth. She says, oh my gosh, people have been, artists have been talking about that for centuries. And then I'm like, what, really? That's pretty cool. I'll put a little bit of paint down here just so I know where that's going to be. It's got... A little bit of eye going on up there. Pretty soon I'm gonna switch to pencil and start detailing this bad boy. Tap, tap, tap. So quiet. You'll probably hear Belle snoring in a minute. There she is. Over there. In her spot. She's making some pretty cute pretty cute sounds. <laughs> she just did. And then I have another dog. He's my buddy. His name is Boss. And he is our backyard dog. We have a we have a front zone dog and a back zone dog because this one right there, that old girl right there, is extremely territorial and mean. And if another dog comes in her territory, she will kill it or a cat, or anything that she can catch. And when we got boss, Belle was, Belle is my old girl right there. She's a pit bull. She's very friendly to people. Don't, uh, she's not mean at all to people. She's, she, matter of fact, she just loves, she, she loves people. Sometimes too much, she'll like try to knock them over and stuff, but um, when we first got boss, I, whoops. All right, where's she? 
Where's my color wheel? Where's my, okay. I don't know what just happened. Um, we, I had just lost a very good friend of mine. He had died from a sudden heart attack. He was, this was when I worked at the local high school and he was one of our assistant principals and I was a counselor and so we had a very close working relationship. He was also our defensive coordinator for our football team. So he was, and he was just the kind of guy that everybody loved. He loved life. He was funny as anything. I mean, funny. There's more back black in the background there, so I'm gonna start adding some black in there. Back, I put too much mane in there. Anyway, his name was Anthony Jeter, and he called everybody boss. What's up, boss? How you doing, boss? He had um, just a funny way about him, and that was one of one of the many funny things, or you know, that was just one of his personal things. Like I can, I can't think of the word I'm trying to find. That happens a lot, but <clears throat> he was. He got up one Saturday morning, it was the day of prom, 2014, and we had met, let's see, the day, I, I had stayed late the day before, which was Friday, and I stayed in his office with an, another, uh, the, the other assistant principal, the three of us had stayed in Anthony's office. Uh, a little late that Friday, talking about just all kinds of funny things, and we were all going to meet at a local barbecue place the afternoon the next day before we had to go do prom, prom duty. Um, we were all just going to meet, and I had to leave. I left that night to go to my best friend's house in Birmingham, um, she was having kind of a family crisis, and I just knew I needed to go there. So I went there with, my daughter went with me. And I knew, I, I you know, what the plan was I was going to hang out there with my best friend and her family and kind of be there for her. And then the next day, I was, we were going to come back to Auburn in the morning, I was going to have lunch at the barbecue place before prom. And then go home and get all decked out. We usually get pretty decked out for our prom. <laughs> it's pretty funny because we were, you know, the chaperones for the prom. But we would, we would get decked out just to have fun, fun with it for our prom duty and that Saturday morning my daughter and I were sitting out at my best friend's pool we were just kind of catching some rays it was in April it was a beautiful day we were just sitting there kind of soaking up some sun before we drove back to Auburn and uh, st started getting phone calls. First phone call was from the other assistant principal who's a really good friend of mine and he was like, I don't know what's going on. I just wanted to call and tell you. Um, Anthony is in the hospital. He's had a heart attack, they're thinking, and um, that's, all, that's all the information I have right now. And I was... I was like, well, what? And this man was, he, he just, he was so full of life, you know, he just, 
It just didn't seem real that anything could happen to him, and nobody even gave it a thought. I mean, it just wasn't something. He wasn't sick. Um, he he died. He was he had gotten up that Saturday morning, made pancakes. He has three beautiful daughters. One was in college at the time. The other two were at the high school. They were in, you know students at the high school that I worked at, that we worked at, and uh, he got up, made them breakfast, let's see, let me do a little, made them breakfast, um, I'm sorry, first he went and worked out, he went to the gym at the high school and worked out, then they came home, made them breakfast, then he apparently was on the way to Lowe's to pick up, like, I don't know, at a refrigerator part or something. And had a massive heart attack in his car and died. And his car kind of rolled off into the side of a little, not like it didn't roll off into a ditch. It, it just kind of rolled off into, like, the side of the road. And, um, so, once that first call came in, then my phone, as they say, started just absolutely blowing up, and, I mean, I, I couldn't, I just couldn't even believe it. I mean, I literally could not, I, I, it was terrible. It was the most devastating loss I've had in my life. Another friend of mine, a good friend of mine, had died exactly a month before, and I was with her when she died, but it was a long, it was, you know, a long battle with cancer. She and Anthony were, and I were all the same age. We were all 47 when she died and when Anthony died. and But her death was different because it was expected. And I mean, it was devastating as, as is any, you know, loss of a friend. But his was different. It was just, it was so tragic. It was tragic for this entire community because he was so well loved and was so um, he was known well known throughout this whole community his funeral was held in our new gymnasium our new basketball gymnasium at Auburn High School which is a huge building there were so many people at his funeral. It was just surreal. And in in that day when I came home, um, that Saturday, we, we actually, we still had prom. I couldn't believe it. I, was, I couldn't even believe that I had to get myself together and go do prom duty that night. It was... It just didn't make any sense how we even still have prom. Anyway, I want to get off that subject. That was so, it was so bad. So about a month after that happened, when I was still in just the, the grips of grief, my son plays played baseball, and, and he was on the high school baseball team, and we were at a game. And I was just sitting there. It was one night after school, and we were sitting there watching the game, and I heard somebody go. Behind me, I heard somebody go, Dr. Fairley. You know, and they were whispering. I turned around, and in the bleachers, this were the student section. All the students were sitting there. And one of my students was looking at me and she pointed in her lap and she had this puppy and 
I mean, I just can't even explain how. If I'm feeling down, I mean, there's really just not much a puppy can't help, you know? There's just not. And so I was like, oh, and the puppy was sleeping. And it was just so cute. It was like this mocha colored um, little kind of chocolate lab looking puppy. And Anthony was always made fun of in a you know a loving way because of his mocha skin that was a that was a a funny kind of thing that everybody used to joke about anthony and um so my student and her brother had been hiding this puppy in their basement because <laughs> their mom their dad would let them have a puppy, but their mom was like, no way, no way would their mom let them have a puppy, and they knew that. So we were, they were hiding this, this dog, this puppy, in their basement, and he had been down there for like three days, and nobody, their parents didn't know anything about it. And um, I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm there at the baseball game holding this daggum puppy, and take him over to Jeff and I'm like you know Jeff my husband Jeff is just sitting there going no no you know no anybody that knows me knows I'm always I'm always in the market for <laughs> another puppy <laughs> I'd have I'd, you know, I'd have way, way too many dogs if it were left to my device, devices and at the time you know this was when I was very active, so Belle was, we knew she, we already knew she was territorial, and I bring this guy's nostril down a little bit, so see what I'm doing? I brought his nose down to make it more, I don't know, I might be messing it up, but. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see what happens. You see, I'm constantly moving this color wheel too. I'm constantly changing, but I'm all, I'm staying all over here because I'm not I'm not not putting any blue blue in there. But this all over here is what I'm using for shading. Whatever color is the main color of my subject, I, I typically do use this left half if you if you um uh what am i gonna what am, if you half the the circle diagonally like that this left half is all grays in that color so basically it starts with a white bright white up here to black and then it's like blue black over here so you'll see I'm constantly changing the color over there. Anyway, so I brought the nose down, so his head's gonna be bigger than it is in the picture, but that's okay, it'll work out. Okay, anyway, so I'm going like, looking at my husband and then I took the puppy over there because the puppy had fallen asleep on my lap and it was just, uh, it was just, I just needed that dog so much at the time. I just needed it and, then I, and I knew that and I guess my husband knew that because at first he was just like, ooh, that's too pink. First he was just like, no, you know, no, what are you doing? And, um, I said, <laughs> this is when I knew I had him. I said, we could, we could name him Jeter because Anthony Jeter was the, the name of my friend that died. So we could name him Jeter. And he looked, Jeff, my husband looked at me and he goes, 
We'll name him Boss. And I was like, yes, I got him. So the next day, I went to the student's house. And between that night and the next morning, the mom had found out about the puppy in the basement. She was, oof. She was just people that don't like dogs. I don't know. I just don't understand that, how a person could not like dogs. And this woman didn't, she just, she wanted no part of that animal being in her house. So she gladly gave everything that the, her son and daughter had spent on this puppy, which, I mean, they had bought him, like, they had bought him a, um, like a halter leash, or uh, what am I trying to say? A halter collar kind of thing, and a leash, and water bowls, and all that kind of stuff. That she just brought all that stuff to me and gave it to me and so I took boss home so he's he's our back he's our he Bell has the front uh, zone and boss has the back zone and this is because we foolishly thought and I mean it's not just me I know Jeff we we hoped that Bell, since Bell was a female and Boss was a male and Boss was a puppy, we hoped that Bell would tolerate him and not be mean to him. And that lasted for about a month, just long enough for us to get completely, or me, to get completely in love with this puppy. And then she attacked him and almost killed him. And that was like the straw that broke me as far as, you know, all the stuff that had been going on with the death of Jeter and the death of my friend before then. It, it, 2014 was just a terrible year for me and my family. Lots of stuff happened. My sister's son was going through like an illness that nobody could figure out. That was... That's another story, but it all happened in 2014. And so when Bill attacked my puppy, I lost it. We had to take him, we had to take Boss to the AU Vet Clinic. It was like a Sunday night. And he, I was right there when it happened. I was like five feet away. And when we were outside, and I guess, I, th I think what happened is Bill, Bill and Boss were, they were both in the, in the bushes, kind of right next to me, and they were just sniffing around and stuff, and I think Bill smelled a cat, and when she would see a cat or smell a cat or whatever, she would go absolutely nuts, and he was right there, and so she turned on him. And he just started like screaming. Well, she, she got him like a. I don't know why I'm going into this. I just am talking, I guess. But you know how dogs will kind of get something in their mouth and then start slinging it around like a rag doll. That's what she was doing to him. And since I was right there, I'm like kicking her and making her. I made her. She finally let go of him. And um, he was just making this horrible sound. There was blood everywhere. And my husband jumped in the car. And we, my daughter went and grabbed a towel just to kind of throw over him. And I just, and we just drove very fast, fast to the emergency animal clinic, Auburn University which we have, they're excellent, but it's gonna cost you like a million dollars just walking in there with an animal. 
course I'm exaggerating, but not by much. Anyway, we took the screaming puppy and I guess Jeff had already called them and they knew we were coming and I was holding I was holding him in my lap and he had a um a towel over him and I just I mean I just knew he was a goner. I just thought that his neck was gonna be oops. I just thought his neck was gonna be like completely ripped open and just I just thought we were gonna lose him, you know. And they took him right away when we walked into the emergency facility and um, they can't, you know, and I'm just squalling and I'm not really a very emotional person in general, but I was just too much. I had, I had just been dealing with too much and um, so I was losing it and fortunately they came right in and just said, you know, it's not as bad as it seems. He's gonna be okay. We're gonna do some x-rays, you know, but it's it looks way worse than it is. And thank God, I was just like, thank God. You know, I just, I was so grateful, but then we had to figure out what we we're gonna do with him, you know, because I couldn't let that happen again. <laughs> So, let's see, that was, Belle was four, and she's 11 now. Loss is six now. So that was six years ago. And um, for basically five and a half years, they've just, we've had separate zones in the house where they can coexist peacefully without coming into each other's territory. We have an underground fence. Boss has the whole backyard, the back porch, and our bedroom, and he sleeps with us. And Bill has the rest of the house and the front yard. So, and he was my, um, he was my barn dog until I had my accident, so he would go with me. He was a great barn dog. He would go with me to the barn, and, and then I had my accident, and so now he's just, he just hangs out in our backyard, and our back, you know, he chases off the deer, and whatever other animals come into our backyard. So, we have Boss and we have Bill. Oh, and he's, he's like a, we figure he's probably half pit and half chocolate lab. All right, what I'm doing now is I'm gonna go over here and I'm going to bring, I'm, I'm, I'm at a point where, if you can see, I'm at a point where I can start to put some details, go in and put details in my my picture, my portrait of the horse. Because right now it's just, you know, very fuzzy. And I mean, it kind of looks like, you know, a, a watercolor portrait. But typically what I do, I'm going to put my pencil down so I can try to show you this. but. My Apple Pencil. What I what I'll do is I'll go in and I'll zoom in. So I want to get this this left side of his face kind of zoomed in. Move it down a little bit so I can get the ear. And um. Okay, and I'll zoom in, and then having the split screen like this is cool because before I had the split screen, I would pull up a picture on my phone or 
if I, if I had an actual photograph and I would hold it with my left hand <laughs> while I would draw with my right hand and that was just kind of tedious. So anyway, this is way better. I go over here and I, I usually do details at this point of my portraits in pencil and so I'm going to try to record this if I can without messing up. I'll go and get some black. Okay, and so I'll go and just start carving in the actual shape of the ear. See, it was cool that when I use black is kind of think in the negative like negative space I can go in and I can carve out what you know what shape and it it helps that I know a lot about horses and their anatomy because I've been around them for a, you know I've been around them a lot and I rode for so long and the last I would say the last five years before my accident um, was spent a lot of time was a lot of money a lot of money a lot of time was spent on horses my daughter got into riding a little well a lot she got into riding um, before I had my accident and um, before I actually got in got into writing again myself she got into it first and so I was just helping her I really didn't think I was gonna ride anymore I had had a pretty bad fall when my daughter was five I, I fell and broke my tailbone which nobody nobody ever wants to do and if you've ever done it oh I still have issues with that but um so I really didn't think I was gonna get back into riding but she she wanted to so she got into it and you know I found her a barn and she started when she was about 11 and um, pretty soon I mean she just kind of took off she is a natural at it she has a, a natural size about her as far as riding she's she's more on the petite side as compared to me I'm very I'm tall and most riders that are really effective riders the ones that I know are have that body style they're kind of petite yet strong and anyway she just she really kind of took off and had just a a natural equitation sense about her and she was a beautiful rider she started um she started competing and jumping and everything just came came really well for her and um and then i i mean it was just that was bound to happen that shortly after you know, we, we bought her a horse. First, it was leased. We leased her a horse, and um, but then we bought we bought her a horse, and then I started riding and started um, just going out and taking like little like lessons on the schooling horses and stuff. Okay, now this ear, if you can see this ear right here, has black on the outline of it. That one does too, but it's more pronounced in this ear, so. And it's got that that white mane as a background, so I'm gonna be careful to kinda do that. Just pull the shape in. Anyway, she 
she was writing and showing, and then I started again getting into it, and I, I have a personality that I don't just get into something. If it's something that I like, I go all in, um, and I did. I went all in on the horse thing, and I bought a horse. I bought an off-the-track thoroughbred was crazy he was crazy but you know it's funny I as many times as I fell off that horse I never got hurt on him falling off of him I broke my neck falling off the best horse I've ever ridden or had in my life so it's just one of those things these this guy's ears are way closer together than the picture see that there's always there's always going to be something like that i got to figure out if i can live with it i don't know all right so i've done the years just You know what? I am going to scratch that ear. This is what I do sometimes. Okay, this ear comes straight down to the eye and to the cheek. So it's kind of a straight line, even though this ear is. But this ear needs to come more over. So what I'm going to do is just go back, pull up my watercolor. <clears throat> I, I really hate doing this, but sometimes I just have to do it because... It, it wouldn't look right if I didn't change what that ear looked like. Okay. Come in here with some black so I can kind of... And when I do something like this and I go back and I have to change something, I just have to tell myself... It's going to look okay. It's going to be okay in the end. And this is actually not even that bad. This, this is a minor. That's minor change. I've done, like, I did a self-portrait a few months ago. And I had to completely erase my eye like a number of times. I mean, I'd messed it up. And, you know, it was one of those things where I could not figure out what was wrong with it. I was just like, there's something, there's just something not right. And I finally figured out it was, it was one of the eyes in my self-portrait. So I went in and did what I'm doing now, scratched the whole thing. And All right. Let's see. So, I want to show you how I do some more detail, but right now I'm just kind of going in with pencil and putting in some of the lines that I know are going to help me outline different parts of my subject. This is a really pretty picture of a horse and I kept calling it a photograph but it's it's actually not a photograph it's just it looks like a painting somebody else's painting of a beautiful horse um so what story was I talking about Oh, Kira riding. So Kira's riding, and then I start riding, and um, 
I got her a horse. Then I got me a horse. <laughs> then I got another horse. I had two horses. And my husband was like, what is going on, really, with all this? He was just like, oh, my gosh. It's like when you buy a boat, it's just, horses are... It's just a very expensive um, hobby, but like I said in that pr previous video, I was at a point in my life where, you know, I was just, I had my own, my own work, I had a good job, I was making good money, um, and I could afford the nice horse things for the first time in my life. Because, I mean, when I first started riding, when I was like 8 or 10 or however old I was, we didn't have anything. I mean, I know my dad, like, he paid for like one lesson a week or maybe two lessons a week. I don't even know. And um, then my parents got divorced, and it was like pulling teeth to try to get money for my lessons. It was a big deal. We just didn't have money and um, and that and riding and all of the things that go along with riding is very expensive. It is an elitist, if that's the right word, um, hobby. So if you get if you get the horse bug. And you don't have money to to what is what is the phrase to whatever your habit you don't have the money to you know oh gosh you know what I'm trying to say it can be hard. Because, as you know, a lot of little girls, they fall in love with horses, and they want to ride, and they want to compete, and they're really good, and I've just seen it, and I, and I, and I was there. And I, so they start mucking stalls for wherever, you know, for wh whatever barn they're working for, so they can pay for their lessons, and it's like their entire world goes to their horse life because it's so expensive I think about that now with the coronavirus like I, I've been thinking about animals you know if people s start losing their jobs but then they have say they have a couple of horses that they're paying for you know to be fed or they're you know, for their care or whatever, and what, how is that going to happen? I just worry about the animals. I mean, it's just my nature, and I am worry about people and kids and stuff too, but it really hits me when it comes to animals. So our country is just in a scary, uncertain place now, and... You know, it's just scary. I'm going to work on that eye. That's what I'll do. I just want to zoom in on that eye right now. And let's see. I'll zoom in right here. That's what I'll do. And so I'll show... How, oh, get back to that blue, okay. I'll show typically how I do this. All right, this is black, so I'm going to go in here and I'm going to see how this guy's neck. See, I'm, I'm working in the negative right here. I'm kind of looking at the black outline of this horse. You see I'm kind of going in and I'm kind of carving out lines right here. This is part of his neck. 
His neck comes down like this. And then this is his eye. And it's close to the neck. I'm going to go in and put that white line on the inside to make this, this is called the crazy, crazy eye horse look. Then I'm going to work in the negative again and kind of carve out the outside shape of that eye. Then I go and I get some gray and I'm going to put his eye, the shadows, come in, see if I can do this. Horses always have this kind of curve, the inner curve to their eye that is, it just makes it look real when you do that. You know, almost like it's almost like an eyebrow, kind of. I'll go in and get a smaller black line. A lot of times when I'm doing this without holding the phone and talking and drawing at the same time, I'll turn my picture. Like, I can turn this all kinds of ways, which I probably do right now, actually, so that I can draw... You know, some angles are easier for me to draw because of my hand situation. I'm going to turn that back because I can't really see what's going on. I don't want to make him look too scared. Mine is looking a little, well, he, I mean, he does look kind of crazy, but. So. And then, let's see. Put some more white here. Put some more white here. This white goes up. And then you see how his neck goes like this. And then the curve of the eye comes out a little bit of so basically, I just draw what I see. I, I'm not, I could not, I'm not saying never because I, I just try not to say never, but at this point in my life, in my art world, I, do not draw or paint something out of my, you know, my own imagination or creativity, you know, my own, I just don't, that's just not what I do. I, I, I paint or draw pictures of photographs of beautiful things or interest, anything, something that's interesting to me. That's what I do. I feel like that artist, that guy that talked while he painted, he was so calming, Bob, somebody, Bob Jones, Bob, shoot, I don't know, I don't know his name, but that's who I feel like, because I, I feel like I'm kind of doing that soft talking like he would do and I hear my dog snoring in the back and it's just so relaxing see up in the ear see if you look at the picture of the actual ear there's there's always fur on the inside of the ear and so to make to make my ear look Real, more realistic. I'll put some just little bits of fur. And then I'll 
some more dark. These three buttons up here, pigment friends, when they moved these buttons up here, oh, it made me so mad because I, I was constantly tapping them by accident or on accident, accidentally, how about that? It just was one of those little things that bo bothered me. I wrote pigment about it. I was like, why did you put those up there? And I thought that we were gonna get enough people complaining about it that they would move them back because they used to be over here somewhere. But you know, Nobody asked me, so I had to adapt. I'm good at adapting for the most part. So, all right, what was I talking about before I got off on the details of the eye? See, I'm carving this ear out too. I'll do that a lot of times I'll, in order to get something the right way, I'll have to carve it out of the negative space because, I don't know. I don't know what I was, the train of thought, I was just lost just now. That happens. It happens. I'm 54 and it happens, but also I take the medication, I blame it on Lyrica. I blame a lot of stuff on Lyrica. I'm gonna do this right now, just kind of bring this mane around. All right, hang on. So, let me look at that. That eye is too scary looking to me. I want to go in and make it a little less scary, if that makes sense. I don't want the horse to look afraid as he looks right now or scary this eye when when you see a horse and you see the white of the horse's eye <laughs> I've seen that look a lot and it 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 means a horse is afraid and so when you have an afraid horse that means that you better watch out because they are unpredictable when they start looking crazy like this, you just better watch out. And they're very powerful animals. I always had a very deep respect, very healthy fear of horses and their power because they are animals and they're animals of prey and so they, they're skittish. I mean, I've been on a horse that was calm one second and like a leaf blew across their field of vision and a horse freaking d jumped 10 feet to the side. I mean that anybody that rides horses and those horses has this experience that something like that. It just happens. Horses are They can be cray, cray, as they say. You know, sometimes what I like to do, even if it's not, see what I'm going, uh, looking at a different palette up here, over here, or a different wheel, color wheel, I'm gonna look at a brown, because I know that this horse's eye is gonna be like a brown. And it might 
not make that big of a difference because it is pretty much a black and white picture. But to me, oop, almost dropped it. To me, it makes a difference. Okay, now I'm going to come over here and I'm going to do this other eye. So, the other eyes in the in the dark space of the horse, basic, basically this whole right side of the horse's face is in the dark as far as the shadow. So the shadow is what I'm talking about. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to, with my pencil, start putting in the shape that I want this horse's eye. Use black. And see how it kind of protrudes, protrudes out a little bit? But then you have the horses kind of like, there's like a line of eyelashes. Do you see right there? There's like little eyelashes. Horses always have eyelashes. So do dogs. Most animals have the same stuff we have. Um, let's see if I can make this look somewhat All right, hang on. I need to stop talking for a minute so I can get this right. All right, I'm gonna zoom, zoom, zoom back in. Let's see. It's just something like this. I, I tend to have to con <laughs> clearly concentrate a little more because I don't want to mess it up. We got the ear. I'm always looking at angles too. I worked as a drafts person back when you don't you did all that stuff freehand too. After high school, I. Would, and so I do have technical experience with like lines and angles and that kind of stuff. And it was, it was artistic, I would say, because not everybody could do that. You know, not every, everybody could draw like that. And I worked for electrical engineers and civil engineers and this was before I started college. This was prior to my second life as a high school counselor and getting my, going to, I, I didn't go to college until I was 25, 24, 25. So that's a whole nother story. But before that, my life, I lived in Boston, well, New Jersey and then Boston and, uh, and I worked as a drafts person. So, I have to say, a lot of times when I'm doing my drawings, I'm looking at angles. So I'm looking at the ear and this angle right here, and I'm making sure that the angles are right. And that's a, a lot of my portraits. That's how they, I guess, 
end up looking so realistic. A lot of people say that oh, it looks just so realistic. It looks like a photo. Um, it's because I, I really pay a lot of attention to the lines and the angles. And I think if you get the, the angles right in a face and the shadows, I mean, everything goes together, then it's going to look more realistic. Okay, this eye over here is looking kind of good. I, li I like it. This eye right here is okay we got this this line and then we got a space I'm trying to figure out if I need to make that side of the face bigger him look like he's turned more. I think I do. I think he is turned more, so it, it is more like that. This. These lines are coming down. This is like the shape of the face. Okay, I think I'm getting it. Because, oh, that was my stomach. Excuse my stomach. So, putting some the gray shadows back in. But basically, this horse has turned a little more. to the right, you can see by the nostrils, and this side of his cheek, he's not looking dead straight at you, he's turned this way, so we're looking at if that makes sense. And so I'm trying to make it look like that and my, my horse too. And the angles of faces like that can be, can be kind of tricky. So I'm always trying to put like a, an axis to cut through the center. I'm trying to think of like, if I were to, if I were to make a line going down the center of this horse's Head, but then the back of it is more like back there. Oop, my battery is getting low on my phone. But um, I think if we turn the nostrils and make this nostril look like that, like you're looking at it from the side kind of, this nostril is straight on. then we're gonna get it, get it right. Okay. All right, so. What was I talking about? I don't even remember. That, that's gonna happen. If I'm gonna do, if I'm gonna do YouTube videos like this, where I'm talking like this, which is really kind of not kind of it it is it's, it's therapeutic for me because I don't really have I don't really talk that much during the day usually I'm doing something some picture and um Yeah, my daughter's still doing school, like Zoom classes, you know, virtual classroom, however you want to say it. So she's, 
and she's 20, so she's just naturally at that age where she's in her room the majority of the time. As she would be in her dorm if she was at school. Oh, I don't know what I just did. I just did something with this eye that I don't like. I'm going to fix it. All right. So anyway, if I'm gonna if I'm gonna continue to do these videos, which you know, just let me know with feedback, comments, whatever. If this is something that I should continue to do, if it's interesting at all to y'all to a watch what I'm doing, but also b listen to my crazy self talking if that's something that is interesting let me know because I'll keep doing it I enjoy it kind of gives me something to it gives me a, a another realm of purpose and usefulness, if that makes sense. Let's see, I could carve that eye in a little bit. This kind of goes back like that. Do y'all see what I'm doing right here? I'm kind of trying to make the white mane kind of carve in what the side of this eye is going to look like. There we go. Okay, I feel like I'm getting it. I feel like I'm getting it a little better. Let me erase a little bit of that. Oh. All right, so we got that, we got this, then we got a little line in there, a little gray. There's got to be a better way for me to do this than ho actually holding this stupid phone and videoing like this. Got to be able to set up a camera. I mean, we have not a camera, but a, um, well, yeah, video camera. We have a video camera that I need to, I need to just figure out how to set it up behind me so it's, because with me looking, looking down and talking like this, it, it makes my voice, I know it makes my voice sound funny too. It's not my natural voice. Ooh, it's starting to look good. I get excited when it start to, starts to look like I want it to look like it's a little dark right there and I'm gonna zoom back out I see when I do that and I zoom out and I'm looking at mine for the first time I always am like damn I can't draw I can do it and I get excited because then I'm like okay okay it's come it's happening it's really, I really, <laughs> like Sally Fields, they like me, they really like me. If you're young, you don't have a clue what I'm talking about. She made Sally Fields an actress. <laughs> and she made that comment at the Oscars when she won an Academy Award. She said, they like me, they really like me. 
and it was made famous. All right, so I am going to stop this right now because this is a point in this drawing. I'm at a point in this drawing where I am kind of happy with what it's looking like, and I'm just going to, from this point now, I'm going to go in and do details and finish it up. And then I'll post it on pigment. Talk to y'all later.